World War II was marked by the devastation of cities bombed from the air. The German Blitz on Britain, the Allied bombing of Germany, and the American air campaign against Japan caused immense destruction. Ironically, when World War II began, bomber crews on both sides were under strict orders to avoid cities. But the blunder by a single German crew which lost its way and dropped a few bombs on the outskirts of London escalated into the firestorms which killed hundreds of thousands. It is a classic example of how a seemingly minor error can have monumental consequences. When Europe went to war in September 1939, the peoples of both sides feared the immediate bombing of cities, perhaps using gas bombs. The Zeppelin and bomber raids of 1914 through 1918 had triggered widespread predictions that this would happen. In spite of the fact that the damage they had caused was relatively minor. The Spanish Civil War, which began in 1936, witnessed widespread bombing. The devastation of the Basque town of Guernica by aircraft of the German Condor Legion on April 26, 1937, shocked the world and appeared to confirm that the bomber would dominate future war. As the war clouds loomed ever larger over Europe, governments took steps to prepare for this aerial onslaught. They organized the building of air raid shelters. Civil defense organizations were set up. Civilians were issued gas masks and taught how to cope with the bombing. Even children received instruction. No wonder everyone believed that the war would open with mass bombing. However, the air forces of both sides had a policy in place that they would only bomb military targets. The Luftwaffe concentrated on providing support for the German ground forces as they overran Poland. The British contented themselves with attacks on German warships and the dropping of propaganda leaflets over Germany. The first apparent crack in this policy came in September 1939, when the Poles declared that they would defend their capital, Warsaw, to the last man. This caused the Germans to regard the city as a legitimate military target. It was therefore subjected to 10 days of air and artillery bombardment. Warsaw only surrendered after all the public utilities had been destroyed and hundreds killed. After Poland had been vanquished, Hitler switched his forces to deal with Britain and France. He launched no immediate attack, and this period became known as the Phony War. Air activity remained at a low level. However, 
the RAF soon found that fighters were shooting down many of their bombers when they attacked German ships by day. The British bombers therefore switched to operating by night, but this produced navigation problems. At the beginning of the Second World War, RAF bombers had two methods of navigating by night. The first was dead reckoning, in which the navigator compared the estimated wind speed and direction with the aircraft's airspeed and computed its position and the bearing on which it should be flying. The other method was astro-navigation, where the navigator took fixes on the stars to establish the aircraft's position. This process took some 25 minutes to complete, during which time the aircraft continued to fly on. Both methods were inaccurate, and inaccurate navigation meant inaccurate bombing. It was therefore better that the RAF continued to attack targets away from population centers. In April 1940, the war began to heat up again when Hitler invaded Denmark and Norway. A month later, on the 10th of May, came the long-awaited German invasion of France and the Low Countries. It was in Holland that the next crack appeared in the policy of not bombing centers of population. The German forces invading Holland were eager to overrun the country as quickly as possible so that they could turn south to join in the battle against the French and the British. The Dutch strategy was to fall back and defend their principal cities of Amsterdam and Rotterdam. On the 14th of May, after some fighting, the Germans demanded the surrender of Rotterdam, but the Dutch gave no immediate answer. The Luftwaffe was therefore ordered to bomb the port. While the bombers were in the air, the Dutch surrendered Rotterdam. Radio messages to the aircraft to abort the mission did not get through, and the attack went ahead. The center of Rotterdam was reduced to a sea of flames. The British thought that the air attack against Rotterdam meant that the Germans had resorted to terror bombing. While they were not prepared to employ the same tactics, Rotterdam did provoke an easing of British bombing restrictions. German centers of war industry east of the Rhine River were now added to the RAF Bomber Command's target list. Inevitably, a few civilians were killed in these raids, but they were not the primary target. Furthermore, the British bombers were too few in number to make much of an impression. On June 22, 1940, France was forced to surrender. This left Britain on her own. A now triumphant Hitler was convinced that his last remaining enemy must make peace. But across the English Channel, Prime Minister Winston Churchill made it clear that Britain would fight on. Consequently, invasion now appeared to be the only option in Hitler's eyes, and preparations for it got underway. The English Channel might seem to the Germans to be just a large river, but before crossing it, they had to gain air supremacy over southern England. Only after destroying the Royal Air Force could the invasion succeed.
From the middle of July 1940, the Luftwaffe tried to do this by attacking British convoys in the English Channel in the hope that this would draw out the RAF fighters. knowing that the main battle was yet to come, refused to be tempted to any significant degree. On the 1st of August, Hitler issued another directive, which was addressed primarily was to launch its main offensive against the RAF on the 6th, or as soon as possible, stressed that there was to be no terror bombing without his massive air campaign created a real danger of bombing blunders. Poor weather delayed the main German air offensive against Britain until August 12, 1940. The Luftwaffe had coordinated their operations. It also initially went for the radar stations on the English coasts, which provided the crews. The system was destroyed on Messerschmitt ME 109. The fuel they carried. This meant that the RAF fighters were often able to get in among the bombers without interference, and the number shot down began to mount. Strength in numbers. The air battles were intense. The 19th and needed break. Hermann Goring now changed tactics. To complete the right night against targets connected with the British war effort in order to... The first of these of August and was to reveal navigation by night as the RAF and near South Hammers close to London. During the course of this bomb, either they miscalculated the wind speed target or they simply panicked, the crew of at least one of these aircraft dropped or jettisoned their bombs over London and nine civilians were killed. Hitler's orders that cities were not to be attacked without his express permission. The crews were severely reprimanded for infantry as punishment. A furious Churchill ordered immediate retaliation with an attack on Berlin the following night. RAF bombers tried to attack armament factories on the northern outskirts. Again, fell on farmlands to the south. A few days and nights. Served the same policy towards Berlin. It was now firmly on their list of tar 29th of August. William L. Shirer, who was in Berlin at the time, British bombers actually is that their bombs had caused. Earlier boasted in public that no British aircraft would be able to audience, you can call me mayor, would be mud. Goering's stupid boast helped to fuel anger among Brits. The Nazi hierarchy feel that this might fuel civil unrest in Berlin. This was a night of the third and fourth of The following day, Hitler made a speech to the party faithful. Two or three or fourth one night drop 150, 250, when they declare that they will increase their attacks on our city. single bomber crew was about to turn the war into a nightmare for hundreds of thousands of civilians. On Saturday, September 7th, German bombers attacked the London docks. Another 204 in Berlin raided the British capital again. In these two it's London was bombed every night but one during the next two months. 
Other British cities as far north as Glasgow in Scotland also suffered. But none of this could disguise the fact not to Hitler turned prematurely east to attack Russia and committed his armies to an agonizing and ultimately disastrous four years. Hitler continued the blitz until May 1940. Instead, the RAF Bomber Command began to steadily pulverize Germany. The bombers of the U.S. 8th Air Force, it became a ruthless offensive that would continue until virtually the end of the war in Europe. Of hundreds of thousands of Germans. By May 1945, large parts of Germany had become a virtual desert. The horrific destruction caused by aerial bombing in Europe would be repeated against Japan. HE-111 crews did in fatal chain reaction.